Hey Chan Physics, this is the Universal Gravitation Worksheet and we're um, just going to be going through this sheet real quickly so that you guys have something in case um, we run out of time on block day. So um, the formula is up there already. So if, you, um, if you're getting this, you also have the key. The key is on um, my WAG, but um, the first thing is you got to know the equation. So we'll write this down. You won't have to memorize it, so don't spend any time memorizing it. But these are the, the answers to number one. All right, number two, um, all we're doing is asking you to, to plug in the equation. So you're going to see real quick, um, how do you put this into your calculator? I think it's the most important part, right? So we've got the four-column method. we got the masses, right? We've got the equation. We've put in the numbers. And now we have to put this into a calculator. And you need to learn how to do that. And so I've got my TI-35 here. And we're going to try to teach you how to put in scientific notation into your calculator. All right, most students think that the right way to put 6.674 times 10 to the negative 11, they go 6.674, and then they put the times 10 raised to the negative 11. Now, this is okay because it's correct, but it's going to get you the problem wrong a majority of the time. And so we're going to learn a different way to put that into our calculator, all right? Instead, we're just going to write, type in 6.674, and then we're going to hit this EE -E button. That's, that du that's double blue EE, -E, right? And to get to that, you have to hit the second button and the E button. You see the E shows up? So it's just the number E and then negative 11. This, this way of getting um, scientific notation in is the correct way, not because I said it was, but because it makes sure that we get the problem right all the time. Because the calculator now knows that this is all one number. When you put it in the other number, it thinks there's two. And that's going to get your um, um, your calculation wrong about half the time. All right, so I put in the gravitational constant times 65 times 25,000. Okay, divided by three and hit the square button and we get our number. All right, now you see that this number comes out as not scientific notation. That's because there's enough space for the calculator to show it. But if we want to see it in scientific notation, it's very simple. We hit the second button, we hit this button right here, this, and see it says flow, which is floating decimal, scientific notation, and engineering and so we just push this over here and hit enter and now we get it in scientific notation 1.205 times e to the fifth which is um, e to the negative fifth and so that's 10 to the negative fifth okay if you practice this ee -E button second e number one it's faster there's less strokes and number two you'll get it right all the time okay Right. I'm only going to do a couple of these problems because most of these are just that. You're just going to be practicing putting things into your calculator. But this next one is, the, I'm going to start from scratch. Okay, even though it's in the, the thing, um, let's look at number three. It says, assuming the distance between two objects does not change, what would cause the de a decrease in the gra gravitational force? Well, in these kind of problems, when they ask you some, to, if something happens, what will happen? The first thing you should always do is write down the equation. So force is equal to g m1 m2 divided by r squared. All right. So we've got the equation down, and then we tell ourselves, what are they telling us? They say, well, assuming the distance between the two objects does not change. So we cannot change r. r has to remain steady. All right. So we have, they're asking us to decrease the force. We can't change G. G is a constant. We can't change R because they told us. The only two numbers we can change are M1 or M2. So how do we get F to go down? How do we get F to go down? Well, in this equation, it must be that M1 must go down or M2 must go down or both. Okay. So that's how we think through that. We just write down the equation. We tell ourselves what they're willing to change. Right here, they're saying we can't change this, but we are willing to change this, and so we figure it out. Okay. Now, the number four is a little bit different. Um, they're going to say 
find the gravitational force between two objects is 1,200. What would happen if we um, doubled the, the distance between them? Okay. So again, all you do is write down the equation. F is equal to G, M1, M2, divided by R squared. Okay. So that's the original equation. So now the new equation. They say, well, the force is equal to 1,200. G stays the same. M1 and M2 stay the same. But we're going to double R. You see, I put 2R. <coughs> right? That's a little confusing to me. So I'm going to use a little bit of math to say, well, that must be G, M1, M2, divided by, what's 2R squared? Well, 2 squared is 4. R squared is R squared. And so I get this. G is equal to M1, M2, divided by 4R squared. So what have I done to this equation that's different from this equation? Well, I've added a 4. I have divide, have to divide by 4. So if I divide by 4 on this side, I have to divide by 4 on this side. Whatever we do to one side, we do to the other side. So we must have to divide by 4 here. And so if we double R, we must get 1 quarter of 1,200. So F of G must be 300. Okay. So that is um, what we learned in my class is kind of like this way of thinking through things. You write through the equation, and then you write the new equation with what they tell you to do. And then you figure out what you've done to one side, and then whatever you've done to one side, you have to do the other side to get to the, the answer. Okay? All right. The rest of these, um, I'm just going to go through, just talk you through these. Okay? So here they tell us that we're not going to uh, change M. All right? But we want the force of gravity to go down. Right? And so um, if we want the force of gravity to go down, we can only change R or R squared. And so how do we get the force of gravity to go down? We must have to change R, get it bigger. And the reality is, is that this makes sense to us, not only mathematically, right? If we want F to go down, R has to go up. But it actually makes sense, like if you think about the FET, right? When could we get the force between two objects to get uh, smaller or to go down, we split them further apart, right? And when they got further apart, the force went down. And so to get the force to go down, we must have to make R go up, okay? All right, the rest of these are really just plug and chug or, or four column methods. We're doing the four column method here. We write the equation down, we put these in. We learn how to put the number in to our calculator with the E button. Same thing's true here, all right? Um, so we're just doing the four column method. Same thing here, four column method, we're just practicing. Now nine and 10, we didn't spend a lot of time with, and so the reality is, is that I'm not sure if it's gonna make it to the quiz, but um, if we're looking at nine and 10, my class, we kind of said we're gonna go over this for the test, but not for the quiz. Um, the idea is, can we find um, what gravity is? So F of G equals M times G. That's what we know from this equation. Weight equals mass times gravity or force of gravity equals M times G. So if we solve for G, it's just force of gravity divided by M. Well, force of gravity we just been working on is this equation right here. So we're gonna plug that in here. Divide by M2, which is our, our small mass. And so we get G is equal to G M1 divided by R squared. Now the problem in, in that I when I did this problem and I did this wrong is that the reality is we should use the Earth's mass. So the Earth's mass goes here. And our distance here is not just the distance above the surface, but we must have to add the radius of the Earth. So that's why we kind of said, let's just let, let this one go. This problem is done correctly. So if you're looking at this problem for Ms. Moise, this problem is done correctly. Same idea, we solve for G. Right, and then we we go from there. Okay, all right. Um, hopefully that helps you guys if you're studying late tonight. See you later.